Hello everybody, thank you for taking your virtual seats here and we hope you're ready for yet another tutorial in our beginner's guide to interior design rendering with V-Ray for Cinema 4D series. In this one we're going to be focusing all of our attention on finalizing some of the key materials in our little scene here. And those materials are the main wall material, the floor material in that other room there, and also the floor material in this entrance room right here. Now, as we're going to be finalizing those materials, we're going to be showcasing some of the workflows that we think are going to be really useful to you for whenever you're going to be creating realistic materials on your own. Now, as we always say, let's not beat around the bush and let's just go straight to it. So the first material that we're going to focus our attention on is going to be this main wall material here. So let's set up a nice little uh, region render here. Okay and let's talk about the wall material and what we want to change about it. So right now, if you take a look at our wall material, it has this very plain uniform base color, right? There's no imperfections on it, whereas in reality, there would probably be some dust or grime accumulating on the wall itself. So certain parts would be slightly lighter, other parts would be slightly darker. And the same can be said for the glossiness of those reflections as well. Right now, they're super uniform. Um, and also, if we zoom in, closer you're going to notice that the surface is just completely smooth okay there's this is a really impressively painted wall material because even if you were to uh, freshly paint a wall in the real world and even if you are a professional at your craft you know uh, the paint would still trip a little bit there would be some imperfections on it and so we have none of that on our wall material here so those are some of the things that we're going to be implementing to our material here. So let's just um, bring up the node uh, editor for our wall material here. And then let's just bring in our first imperfection map that we'll be using here. So the map that we'll be using is an old acquaintance of ours. If you watched our previous tutorial, the metal one, we've used this imperfection map on that rail on our sofa there to drive the glossiness of the reflections to have some imperfections essentially right now typically you don't want to reuse your imperfection maps a lot because you might start noticing patterns in your materials right when you have a lot of repeating textures but we do want to showcase to you that uh, for scenes where you don't have a lot of objects you can really get away with just a couple of imperfection maps because nobody's going to notice a difference okay so we're just going to showcase to you that you can <laughs> do a lot with just basically a single imperfection map okay so let's take our imperfection map let's uh, plug it into our node editor essentially okay and now as we mentioned you know we want to introduce some imperfections into that base color so we're going to want to plug this imperfection map into our diffuse color slot now as soon as we do that if we take a look at our material preview here you're going to notice that we're completely overriding that base color and we don't want that we want our wall material to retain its base color and we want this imperfection map to be essentially layered on top of our base color okay so let's uh let's unplug the imperfection map here and we're gonna we're gonna show you a neat little workflow that'll really allow you to do <laughs> so much cool stuff uh, when it comes to mixing different imperfection maps on top of each other and it's all real simple so uh, let's open up um, our color folder here for our nodes and let's bring in a color node first okay so this is all going to make a lot of sense in just a minute but for now let's just go through the motions okay so we've got the color node and uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to plug the diffuse color slot that's in our uh, material in our wall material we're gonna copy it and we're gonna plug it into our color node right here okay also make sure that your uh, linear numeric values toggle is toggled to off here just so you don't work with those linear values because uh, that might get a little tricky so uh, with that done let's just paste that color into that input field right there and now now we're gonna need a node that's gonna help us layer things and that node's gonna be the super powerful layer node so let's just drag it in here and what we're gonna do next here and this is where it's all gonna start making a ton of sense for you um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our color node and we're gonna plug it into our layer 2 texture slot 
just like that. And we're going to do the same with our imperfection map. We're going to plug it into our uh, layer texture one slot here. Okay. Now, if we take a look at our layered node preview here, you can see that again, the imperfection map is completely overriding that base color. But if we go under our layered nodes properties, you're going to notice that you can adjust the opacity for each of those layers. So the imperfection map is in layer one, which is sitting on top of layer two. So if we lower the opacity for that layer one, well, then you're going to notice that we're mixing a lot less of that imperfection map on top of that base color node, essentially. OK, and what's even more powerful and even more kind of well, equally useful, but super useful um, uh, thing about it is you can adjust the blend mode for your layers here as well. So you have a ton of blend modes that you can use. And so this really allows for really efficient and really powerful mixing of, well, nodes essentially. OK, now for these types of imperfection maps, uh, these black and white maps, OK, what I typically like to resort to uh, for when it comes to the blend mode is the multiply blend mode. OK, so we're going to use the multiply blend mode. And so uh, now what we're essentially doing is we're just multiplying those darker parts on top of our base color. And that's going to get us a pretty cool looking effect, as you can see. Now, we're going to have to fine tune the opacity here, of course. Uh, and the best way to, to do that is by, you know, seeing how our material looks like in our scene. So let's plug our layered node here into the diffuse color slot. So just directly into the color slot. And immediately you're going to see that something's wrong. So our projection settings for our, or our mapping settings for our wall material are completely off. OK, so what we're going to have to do here is we're going to, uh, well, what I will do here is I will right click on our wall material and I'm going to hit the select material tags slash objects button. Now, what that is going to do is it's going to select all of the material tags where you have this material applied. OK, so this just saves you some time so that you don't have to go inside all of these um, hierarchies here and select these tags on your own. Uh, that command is going to select those for you. So now all, I, all we have to do is we need to set the projection mode here to, well, you know, kind of the gold standard for these types of surfaces, which is the cubic projection. And just like that, look at that. Look at that. We have some really nice imperfections on our wall there. But obviously, obviously the imperfections are too strong. So let's go back into the properties of our layered node here and let's play with the opacity a little bit here. Let's lower it down to maybe 0 0.47. Now, ah, I still think that's too strong. Let's lower it down to 0 0.18. Okay, that's looking like something, but I think it's still too strong. Let's lower it down to 0 0.1. All right, and I think that might work for us here. So as you can see, the effect is subtle, but it will make a difference on our material overall, okay? So sometimes with these imperfection maps, you really want the effect to be subtle. If this was a freshly painted wall, it would probably still retain these imperfections, but it, it would just be a lot less visible, okay? And that's exactly what we're getting here. So as you can see, certain parts are just a little bit darker than these other parts, right? And so this could be dust that's accumulating on the wall. It could be, um, you know, the changes in how the paint was applied, so how, uh, how thickly uh, the paint was applied, that might affect uh, these, how these uh, spots are looking and so on and so forth. Ultimately, we're just adding some realistic details to our material this way. But what would make this even more of a realistic material is the fact that in the real world, these, if, if this was dust or some sort of grime, right? Or even if the paint was less generously applied on these areas, OK, it would probably affect your reflections glossiness. So these darker parts typically on a real wall would be a little less glossy. OK, so if we want our material to be pretty realistic, we're going to want to set up the glossiness imperfections as well. And we're just going to leverage the same bitmap here because um, that's that that's what's going to add that nice detail where these same exact dark spots that we have here are just going to be less glossy. OK, now before we start playing with the glossiness itself, let's just let's just change our vantage point here. Uh, let's maybe change our camera angle to this sort of position right here. Now, why are we doing this? Well, 
the reflections, I think, are just going to be a little bit more visible um, from this angle than they were from that very frontal angle. Okay, so if we go into our uh, wall material here and if we up the glossiness to 1.0, yes, you're definitely going to be able to see that we have some really um, strong reflections forming here. Okay. All right, cool. So now, if we just plug our imperfection map into the glossiness slot here, okay, that's going to have too intense of an effect on our glossiness. If you take a look at the reflections right now, these parts here are kind of starting to be very mirror-like, while these other parts are quite non-glossy. And that's because our imperfection map is pretty intense, right? So we're going to want to mix less of it into our glossiness slot. Now we could use the same layered approach we did for our uh, diffuse color slot, or we could quite simply use a combined float node. This is a very powerful node, and we're going to show you why. Okay, so if we plug our combined float node right into our glossiness slot, as it is right now, well, now we can kind of demo what it does. So by default, one of the uh, most, <laughs> well, by default, one of the most important parameters in the combined float node is the value parameter. So right now the value parameter is set to zero, which means we're getting this node to output this completely black color. If we set our value to one, now it's outputting this fully white color. And if you take a look at our interactive render, now that we've set our value to one, we get those mirror-like reflections going. Okay, because this is the same uh, principle uh, that the glossiness parameter itself uses to define the glossiness. So a value of uh, a glossiness value of one is basically like you plugging this fully white texture into the glossiness slot. Okay, and vice versa. If you plug a completely black texture into the glossiness slot, your reflections are going to be super rough. Okay. Okay. Now, um, in by itself, this is not that useful. But what really makes the this uh, node so useful is that you can plug a texture into its input slot. So we're going to take our imperfection map and we're going to plug it into the texture slot in our combined float node. And now we get access to the mix strength parameter. So now we can define how, how much of that imperfection texture we're mixing on top of that value. Okay. So um, the workflow here that I personally like to use is I first set the mix strength to 0% and then I play with the value parameter. So I just set the value parameter to a value that I think is going to be a good starting point for me. Okay, so a value of 0 0.8. Now, yes, some walls are pretty reflective, but I think we're going to go for a pretty diffuse looking wall here. So let's lower the value down to 0 0.6 maybe or so. I think that might be just a little too reflective for my taste because, again, we're going for a pretty rough looking wall here. Okay, so a value of 0 0.5. This is looking like a good base value to me. And then what I like to do is I like to start mixing in that imperfection map on top there. Okay, so uh, let's uh, mix it in at 70% or so. I think that's just going to be a little too intense. And immediately you can see that now certain parts of this wall are just, well, they're a lot more glossy, right, than other parts, which are a lot less glossy. So the effect is too strong at the moment. So let's lower it down to maybe 30% or so. Let's see how that's looking. And that's looking a lot better. Maybe we could lower it down to 25%. Okay, so again, we're going just for some really, really, really subtle details here. But you can kind of hopefully see that, you know, certain parts are darker and the reflections there are rougher right? Because we're mixing this imperfection map on top of the glossiness there. And these certain parts are just a little bit glossier, right? And so you can clearly see the effect here. You know, we're just adding more and more realistic imperfections to our material. All right. And I think that's looking pretty cool as it is. And our material is really starting to look like something here. It really is. But we're still missing one key ingredient for when it comes to realistic materials, and that is a proper bump map. So I'm just going to copy this um, bitmap node here, and I'm going to plug in a um, imperfection map that, well, let's just open it up 
uh, real quick here so we see how it looks like. So we're going to plug this uh, imperfection map into the bump slot. You can kind of see why, because this map looks like this sort of weathered concrete slash wall surface. It has these cracks and all that, right? So um, I think this is going to just add some nice little detail to our wall here. So let's just bring this texture in and then we're just going to plug it into the uh, bump map slot in our material. Let's also set up a nice little uh, region render here. And then maybe we could maybe lower the opacity on the denoiser just so it doesn't denoise things so intensely. And immediately you can see that now our wall material is pretty, pretty weathered, right? So you can clearly see that it has a lot of bumps and bruises. So maybe we're going to want to tone this effect down. So we're going to go under the bump channel here. And we're just going to start lowering the amount here. So what if we lower it down to 0 0.5 centimeters? Let's see how that is looking. And at this point, we're just being creative, right? So I think the effect is still too strong, as you can see here, right? So maybe we could lower it down to 0 0.15 centimeters or so. Let's see how that's looking. Maybe we could just set up a new render region here. And that's looking pretty cool. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, hopefully the compression is not ruining it for you. But we're getting some slight bruises coming through here. And I think that's going to be enough. Maybe we could lower it down to 1.115. Uh, 1, 1, so we're just going for this really slight effect. Okay. Okay. Now, obviously, you could further tweak things here. Okay. You're encouraged to really. But by and large, this is a pretty basic setup for a realistic material. You're adding imperfections into the diffuse color slot, you're adding imperfections into the glossiness slot, and you're adding imperfections into the bump map slot. And that's basically your 101 makeup for a realistic material. Again, you could further tweak things, add more details to it, customize it the way you want to. But by and large, this is the setup that we think makes up that basic, realistic looking material. All right, so with that wall material looking pretty realistic, let's now focus our attention on the floor and that other room. So again, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a pretty strategic camera vantage point here. So maybe if we choose this angle right here, um, we're going to be able to see those reflections really pop. That's because, you know, we have that bright exterior kind of in front of us and that exterior is really going to get reflected in our floor here. Okay, which is going to emphasize those reflections, which is going to make playing around the reflections just a little bit easier. Okay, okay, so let's bring up our floor B material here in the node editor. And what we're going to do to it is we're just going to add all those basic maps to it, if you will. So we're going to add a glossiness map into the glossiness slot, and we're going to add a bump map into the bump map slot. So let's just start doing that. Let's copy the bitmap here, and then let's bring in a glossiness map for this material. So this acid came with proper glossiness maps. So this Terrazzo Venetian uh, uh, diffuse texture that we have here, this color texture, came with a proper glossiness map texture right here, as you can see, right? And whenever you have assets such as this one, pretty much all you have to do is you just need to import the glossiness texture, plug it into the glossiness slot, and you're pretty much done, okay? But that doesn't mean you can't still customize um, uh, the glossiness in your material, right? So I think I really like the effect. It's a subtle effect, but I think I really like the effect this glossiness map has on my material. But I don't like how our reflections are now a lot more diffuse, all right? They're a lot less glossy. So we could customize things a little bit here. So we could, you know, if you've watched our previous tutorial, we could bring in a remap node. That's one workflow, we could bring in a layered node, that's another workflow, or you know, we could just bring in a combined float node and um, do the magic with it. <laughs> so we're just gonna plug things here um, as they should be. So the bitmap goes into the combined float node and the combined float node goes into the glossiness slot right here. Then I'm just going to lower the mix strength. So how much of that uh, bitmap, the glossiness bitmap are we mixing into our value here? And I'm gonna set the value to be one. So we're going to end up with those super glossy reflections. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start upping the mix strength here. So maybe if we up it to 30% or so, let's see how that is looking. 
Okay. Okay, so now we're mixing that uh, glossiness map in, but you know, as you can see, our uh, reflections are still quite a bit glossy. Okay, there might be they might be just a little bit too glossy, so let's uh, up the mix strength here to forty percent. Okay, and I think I think that's gonna look really good here. Okay, now one thing, one really important thing to note here: the bitmap that we've imported is a, if you'll remember, it's a glossiness bitmap. Now sometimes you're gonna you won't have glossiness maps, but you're gonna have roughness maps. Now those do the same thing; they affect the glossiness of your reflections. But roughness maps are basically inverted glossiness maps. It's just a different standard for defining the blurriness of the reflections, if you will. Now, if you have roughness maps instead of glossiness maps, you can always go into your material under the reflection channel and you can tick use roughness to on here. And now you're going to be using the roughness system, which again is just the inverted glossiness system. So if we just quickly demo what that means, we're going to be using uh, roughness instead of glossiness now. Okay, we're, we're still defining it with the uh, glossiness parameter, but we're using roughness glossiness mode. Okay, so with uh, if we're using roughness, then uh, and if we set it to if we set our glossiness to one, now our reflections are going to be super rough, and that means super non glossy. If we uncheck the use roughness checkbox, well, now we're using the glossiness glossiness mode essentially, and with a value of one, now our reflections are going to be super glossy. Okay, so this is just an inverted way of going at things. It's just a different standard, but it does the same thing. Okay, so as you can see, now we've toggled roughness to on, and we set our roughness glossiness to zero. And as you can see, you know, uh, our reflections are now super not rough, because essentially we're saying, hey, you know, we're using roughness, and we're, we're not, this material is not rough at all. Okay, so again, if you have roughness maps, you can take this to on and plug those roughness maps into the glossiness slot of your material. But we have a glossiness map here, so we're just going to use, um, we're not going to use roughness here. And, you know, we kind of like the effect that we came up here with here. We kind of like the setup. So uh, we're just going to leave it at that. The only thing that's still missing in our material here is, well, it's the bump map. So we have a bump map that came with this asset here. We're just going to uh, take it, plug it into the bump map slot. And just like that, we're done here. We we could tweak its strength, right? Uh, so we could tweak the bump amount, but I think we're perfectly fine here. All right. And so with that, we finished uh, the floor B material, as you can see. And it's looking more realistic than it did before because it has a lot of those imperfections in it. Okay, so before we uh, conclude this tutorial, there's one more change that we're going to make to one of our materials, and that's going to be a change in our floor A material here. So if we take a closer look at our floor A here, so this green floor, you're going to see that these um, lines here that are forming, right, because of that normal map that we plugged in here to define the tiles, okay, you can see that it's kind of getting filtered a little too much. The lines are not quite as crisp sharp as you would want them to be. They have this kind of blurry quality to them. Now when you're facing um, that kind of a, that kind of an effect, what you can do is you can select your uh, bitmap and you can lower the filter blur. Okay, so we're just going to lower it down to 0 0.1. Typically with this parameter, you want to be a little bit uh, careful with it. Okay, because lower filter blur values might cause some shimmering if you're doing animations. It's not as, you know, potentially problematic for still images. Um, it will increase the sharpness of your textures a little bit. As you can see, you know, the difference is quite huge in our floor example here. Uh, but, you know, going down to values such as 0 or 0 0.1 might cause some shimmering in your animation. So you do want to be careful on well, with how you're adjusting this parameter. But as you can see, you know, by playing around with it for certain textures, you might get a lot more of that crispness detail in there. And so 
what we will also do here is we'll just uh, up the multiplier here, maybe to 30 or so, just uh, emphasize those grooves there. So those that spacing between the tiles, right? Well, we're not going to change the spacing. We're just going <laughs> to uh, change the depth of those grooves, essentially, because, you know, we're dealing with a normal map here. OK. All right. And so with that, we're concluding this tutorial. We've kind of finalized the main materials in our uh, in our scene here. And um, now our scene is looking a lot more realistic than it did before we started messing with things. So thank you for tuning in. As always, you know, if you've liked this tutorial, please let us know in the comments. If you didn't like this tutorial, also please let us know in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, well, guess what? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you've learned something new. And uh, we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye, everybody.